Welcome to our latest video, which is an introduction to quantitative chemistry. This video is suitable for GCSE students. By the end of this video lesson, you should understand the meaning of the terms relative atomic mass and relative molecular mass. Now, the relative molecular mass is also called the formula mass. You should also be able to calculate the relative atomic mass of elements with more than one isotope and the relative molecular mass of molecules from given AR values. And finally, you should be able to calculate the percentage mass of an element in a compound using AR and MR values. Now, the aim of this video is to give you an introduction to quantitative chemistry. Now, quantitative chemistry is a very important topic because it allows you to calculate quantities of materials, quantities of reactants and quantities of products. Now, in a chemical reaction, it's important to know how much of a particular product you could produce in a chemical reaction if you used a certain mass of starting materials. Now, if you were making a cake, you would need to know how much of each ingredient to use for a particular size of cake. And the same is true in chemistry. We need to understand how much we require of a certain reactant in terms of its mass to produce a certain mass of products. Now, when studying quantitative chemistry at GCSE, it's important that you understand the meaning of the term relative atomic mass. Now, one of the challenges we have in quantitative chemistry is that atoms and molecules have such a small mass. We therefore can't measure the mass of individual atoms and molecules. However, we can compare the mass of large numbers of atoms of each element using a relative scale. Now, the relative atomic mass is the mass of an atom on a scale where carbon has a mass of 12 on this scale and hydrogen has a mass of 1. And we give it the symbol AR, and the R stands for relative, and the A stands for atomic mass. Now, magnesium has an AR value of 24. Now, this means that if we measured the mass of the same number of magnesium atoms compared to carbon and hydrogen, they would be twice as heavy as carbon and 24 times as heavy as the hydrogen atoms. And this is because the AR value of magnesium is 24 and the AR value of hydrogen is 1 and the AR value of carbon is 12. Now, another way of us looking at this is shown here in the diagram. Now, carbon has an AR value of 12 and hydrogen has an AR value of 1. So this means on our relative scale, carbon atoms are 12 times heavier than hydrogen atoms. And you can see on this diagram, we represent this here with 12 hydrogen atoms here having the same mass as one carbon atom. Now, it's important to mention that you will not be required to learn the AR values of different elements. These are given to you in exams. Sometimes they're given to you in the exam question, but most of the time they're listed in the periodic table. And most exam boards give you a copy of the periodic table with AR values listed. Most periodic tables will have the AR values alongside the symbol together with the atomic number. And the atomic number is the number of protons present in the nucleus. Now at GCSE, you might also have come across the term mass number. Now the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons, but it's not quite the same as the relative atomic mass because the relative atomic mass also takes into account the presence of isotopes. And at GCSE, you were introduced to the concept of isotopes as being atoms of the same element that have the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. So on this slide we have isotopes of carbon. Now carbon has an atomic number of six, so it has six protons. It also has six electrons, but the number of neutrons can vary. Most of the carbon that exists in nature is carbon-12 because it has six protons, six electrons, and six neutrons. But a very small amount is either carbon-13 or carbon-14, where carbon-13 has seven neutrons and carbon-14 has eight neutrons. Now, because around 99% of the carbon that exists in nature is carbon-12, the presence of isotopes doesn't really affect the relative atomic mass of carbon. So a GCSE is fine 
for you to say that the relative atomic mass or the AR value of carbon is equal to 12. However, for other elements, that's not the case. For example, for chlorine, 75% of the chlorine that exists is the 35 isotope, where there's 17 protons and 18 neutrons. And around 25% is the 37 isotope of chlorine, where there is 17 protons and 20 neutrons. So if we're going to work out the AR value for chlorine, we have to take this into account. So to work out the AR value of chlorine, we simply work out a weighted average. So we have 75% of it being the 35 isotope. So we do 75 times 35. And then we have 25% of it being the 37 isotope. So we go 75 times 35 and we add it to 25 times 37. Now we divide this by 100 because there's 100% in total. So if we do this, the average relative atomic mass, the AR value, will be 35.5. Now the method we've used here is identical to the method we would use if you were working out the mean average for a class test. So for example, if 100 people took a test and 75 people had a mark of 35 and 25 people had a mark of 37, we would use this identical method to work out the average, the mean for the test. So now let's test your understanding of this with a practice question. So read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. Now in this question, you're asked to work out the AR value for boron. Now 19.9% of the boron that exists in the world has a mass number equal to 10 and 80.1% has a mass number equal to 11. So to work out the AR value, we just calculate the average. So it's 19.9 times 10 added to 80.1 times 11, and then we divide it by 100 because it's 100% in total. So that will give us an AR value equal to 10.80. So now we've discussed what we mean by the relative atomic mass, it's time to turn our attention to the relative molecular mass, or the formula mass. Now the relative molecular mass, or formula mass, is given the symbol MR. And this is the mass of one molecule of an element, or compound, on a scale where a hydrogen atom has a mass of 1, and a carbon atom has a mass of 12. So it differs from the relative atomic mass because this is the mass of a molecule. Now it can be found by adding up the AR values, the relative atomic masses, of each atom in the molecule. So if we were asked to calculate the MR value for water, H2O, we would simply add up the AR values of each atom in the molecule. So water has a formula H2O. There's two hydrogens and one oxygen. Hydrogen has an AR value equal to 1. Oxygen has an AR value equal to 16. So the MR of water is simply 1 plus 1 plus 16 is equal to 18. Now there's no units here because it's a relative scale. The MR of oxygen molecules, O2, is equal to 2 lots of 16, which would be 32. Now if we were asked to calculate the MR value for methane, CH4, we simply add up the AR values of all the atoms in the molecule. So it would be 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 because there's four hydrogens present. And that would give us an MR value equal to 16. Now some exam boards will ask you to calculate the percentage mass of a particular element present in a compound. Now this can be calculated by using the AR and MR values. So step one in this calculation is to find the MR of the compound. And step two is then to find the total relative mass of the element that you're interested in. And step three would be to find the percentage of that element by using the following formula. The percentage of the element would be equal to the mass of the element present divided by the mass of the compound 
times 100. So here's an example of this type of calculation. Here we're asked to find out how much aluminium there is in aluminium oxide. Now aluminium oxide has a formula Al2O3. So the first step is to find the MR, the relative molecular mass or formula mass of Al2O3. Now the AR value of aluminium is 27, the AR value of oxygen is 16, so the MR value of Al2O3 is equal to 2 lots of 27 added to 3 lots of 16 and that will give you an MR of 102. Now step 2 is to find the total relative mass of aluminium. So aluminium oxide contains two aluminium atoms so the mass of aluminium is 54. So to calculate the percentage mass of aluminium in aluminium oxide Al2O3 we just simply do 54 the mass of aluminium over the mass of aluminium oxide which is 102 and we times it by 100 and this gives us a percentage mass of 52.9. So we're now going to test your understanding of what we've covered in this video with some practice questions. Here's the first practice question, read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it and then we'll go for the answers. So this first practice question is asking you to calculate the relative molecular masses of the following compounds and they've given you the AR values for the elements that are present in the compound. So the first question is asking you to work at the MR value of sodium chloride, NaCl. So we just add up the AR values of the atoms present in the molecule here. So it's 23 plus 35.5 and that gives us a MR value equal to 58.5. And for question B, we're asked to work out the MR value of nitric acid, HNO3. So it'll be simply 1 plus 14 plus 3 lots of 16, which is the AR value for oxygen. And that will give us an MR value equal to 63. And then for part C, we're asked to work out the MR value for magnesium oxide. So the MR value for magnesium oxide is simply 24, the AR value for magnesium, added to the AR value for oxygen, which is 16, and that will give us an MR value equal to 40. Now for part D, we're asked to work out the MR value of sulfuric acid, H2SO4. So to do this, we add up the values for hydrogen. So it's 1 plus 1 plus 32, the value of sulfur, added to 4 lots of 16, which is 64, and we have an MR value of 98. Now to work out the MR of calcium carbonate, we simply add 40 to 12 to 3 lots of 16, so it's 48, and that will give us an MR value equal to 100. And for the last question, we're asked to work out the MR value of ethanoic acid, and ethanoic acid is CH3COOH. So the MR value will be equal to 12, the AR value of carbon, plus 3, because there's 3 lots of hydrogen attached to the carbon. And then we add this to 12, and 2 lots of 16, 32, and a final hydrogen that has an AR value of 1. Now this gives us an MR value equal to 60. So here's our final two practice questions. Once again, read for the questions, pause the video, have a go at them, and then we'll go for the answers. Now for question two, we're asked to find the percentage mass of iron in iron three oxide, Fe2O3, given that the AR value of iron is 56 and the AR value of oxygen is 16. So the first thing we do is calculate the MR for Fe2O3, and that will be equal to 56 plus 56 plus 3 lots of 16. So that will give me an MR value, a formula mass of 160. Now the next thing I need to do is work out how much of the 160 is caused by the iron. So in other words, what's the mass of two lots of iron atoms here? So that would be 2 lots of 56, so it would be 112. I divide it by the 
mass of Fe203, which is 160, and I times it by 100, and that gives me a percentage of iron of 70%. Now for question three, we're asked to find the percentage mass of sodium in sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, and the AR value of sodium is 23, the AR value of carbon is 12, and the AR value of oxygen is 16. So if I add up two lots of 23 for sodium, and I add it to 12, and I add it to three lots of 16, because there's three oxygens, that would give me an MR value of 106. Now step two here is to work out how much of the 106 is caused by having two sodiums here. So that would be 46 of the 106 is down to the mass of sodium. So the percentage sodium is 46 divided by 106 times 100. And if I put this into the calculator, I will have a percentage of sodium equal to 43.4%. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now understand the meaning of the terms relative atomic mass, AR, and relative molecular mass, MR. You should also be able to calculate the relative atomic mass of elements with more than one isotope, and the relative molecular mass of molecules from given AR values. And finally, you should be able to calculate the percentage mass of an element in a compound using AR and MR values. So that concludes our video. Please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, and our Twitter site, which contains lots of chemistry information and links, at Radar Chemistry.